This is the first of four videos on chronic hepatitis B and will be an introduction. In chronic hepatitis B, the virus persists in the body for longer than six months after the patient has been infected. There are an estimated 250 million people in the world who have chronic hepatitis B. The majority of these infections are in Asia, are due to mother to baby transmission at childbirth. There are serious complications of chronic hepatitis B, including liver cirrhosis liver failure and liver cancer. Acute hepatitis B symptoms, high risk groups and prevention has been discussed in a video on hepatitis. To understand chronic hepatitis B and the management, we have to understand the virus and how it looks like. Let us now take a peek at the virus. The important part of the virus that we will discuss are the DNA, which is located inside the virus. The second aspect of the virus that we will be discussing is the E antigen or HBEAG, which is located in the inner core of the virus. The third thing we'll be discussing is the HBS antigen which is located in the outer part of the virus. First, we have the genetic material found in the center of the virus. This is called the HBV DNA. Then we have the E protein, which is present in the inner layer of the virus. In medical terms, we call the E protein the HBE antigen or HBEAG. Next, we have the S protein, which is a protein found on the outer layer or surface of the virus and is present in all patients with chronic hepatitis B. It is found in the coat that envelops the virus. In medical terms, we call the S protein the HBS antigen or HBS AG. The genetic material, that's the HBV DNA, needs both the E protein or the HBE AG and the S protein or the HBS AG to become a complete virus to multiply. Both the E and S protein are in the protective layers that protect the genetic material, the DNA, from hostile environment. Now let us look at what normally happens when the virus enters the body. Usually any infection, virus or bacteria triggers the body to produce antibodies. Antibodies are proteins produced by the immune system to destroy the whole virus or certain parts of the virus. The problem in chronic hepatitis B is that the body is unable to mount an immune reaction. For some reason, the hepatitis B virus does not trigger the immune system and produce antibodies. After many years, the body eventually activates the immune system and starts to produce antibodies to destroy the virus. The first antibody that is produced is the antibody to the HBE antigen, also called the anti-HBE. This destroys the E protein. When the E protein is destroyed, the virus cannot survive. The virus is incomplete and cannot multiply. The only safe place for the genetic material of the virus is within the liver cells. So the virus 
genetic material or DNA withdraws and hides within the liver cells. You can see in this image the viral genetic material or the HBV DNA hiding within the liver cells. This virus needs the E protein to survive. Normally it takes the body's immune system anywhere from 10 to 40 years on an average to produce the antibody to the E antigen and begin the initial step in clearing the body of the virus. Here you can see the viral DNA hiding within the liver cells. The next thing that happens when the E protein is destroyed is something called mutation. Mutation is said to happen when the virus is able to change its genetic code and produce what are called mutant strains. These mutant strains produce proteins which are different from the E protein. There are several mutant strains which I will not discuss here. For ease of discussion, let's call the proteins that are produced by the mutant strains to replace the E protein, the M protein. The antibody, which I described earlier, to the E protein is not effective against the M protein, which means that the antibody cannot destroy the M proteins produced by the mutant strains. Protected by the M protein and the S protein, the virus can once again multiply and safely move outside the liver cell, for example, into the bloodstream. It can now reproduce and can now be detected in the blood. So this mutant strain is called the hepatitis B mutants. Generally speaking, these mutant strains are not as aggressive as the original virus. After many decades, the immune system produces an antibody against the S protein, which is in the coat of the virus. This antibody, which is called the anti-HBS, destroys the S protein. Both the virus with the initial E protein and the mutant M protein need the protection of the S protein to be a complete virus and to multiply. So without the S coat, the mutant virus will eventually die. Only a few harmless and incomplete viral genetic material is left within the liver cells. So in the very late stage of chronic hepatitis B, all that is left is the genetic material within the liver cells. There are no viruses circulating as the body's immune system is ever ready to destroy it with its S and E antibodies. Every year, a certain percentage of liver cells die and are replaced by healthy liver cells. In the process, the liver cells infected with a virus DNA are replaced by cells that do not contain the DNA of the virus. Occasionally, the virus can reactivate if the body's immune system is suppressed and the cells that contain the DNA can again become active. This can happen if a patient is on drugs to suppress the immune system like steroids, immunosuppressive drugs and anti-cancer drugs.